uh, yes, dear lean implementers, dear lean friends from from all over the world, uh, uh, welcome to Lean Global Connection Activity Summit, and also welcome to our webinar, which is an interesting subject uh, that contains information about ship building about shipbuilding, how uh, SEDEF shipyard applied lean techniques, lean methodology, and lean mindset uh, to shipbuilding. That's an interesting subject. Now we are together with uh, Irem. Irem is the board member and the lean implementer and the head of lean activities in the shipyard. Uh, it is a valuable and precious uh, 30 minutes, I think, for all of us listening Iram, how they started, how they improved processes, how they developed their people, what is the resistance, etc. Many things to learn and so exciting. Now I give the word to Iram. Iram. Please, could you give us all the secrets, how you decided uh, to join Lean activities? At the beginning, also, it is very important uh, to recognize uh, shipyard, SEDEF shipyard. Who is SEDEF shipyard? What is doing? How many years from establishment, etc.? and how you decided uh, to attend lean activities, et cetera. Now we are listening to you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Hakan Bey. Uh, so I'll start with my presentation, which I'm hoping it will answer all your questions. And, uh, let me see. I hope everyone can see this easily. So, uh, I will uh, talk about our three-year lean journey. It's uh, we're very new and uh, we're at the beginning, but uh, I want to tell you about adopting a new mindset in commercial and naval shipbuilding in Turkey. So my name is Zirab Kalkalan. I'm the system and process development chief uh, in our shipyard, which is a department that oversees all the coordination for our efforts in terms of achieving lean in, in both management and uh, production and design and etc. And uh, so, first of all, what do we mean by shipyard? Set of shipyard uh, has been established in 1972 by uh, a famous uh, group in uh, in Turkey, Setefea, which is uh, one of Turkey's pioneering construction companies, uh, by founded by two famous Turkish engineers. They founded it with the idea of contributing to the country's development in the early stages of industrializations. And in 1990, they moved all their activities to its current location in Tuzla Bay in uh, Istanbul. And in 2000s, it was sold to the Turkon Holding Group. Uh, Turkon Holding Group is a family-owned shipping conglomerate operating in shipbuilding, container transportation, ship management, and logistics sectors. So it tries to operate in uh, all of the maritime ecosystem. Uh, with the uh, continued investments both to its infrastructure and to its people, it has become now one of Turkey's biggest privately owned shipyards, and it has successfully completed over 215 projects to date. Uh, we celebrated our 50th anniversary last year, and we uh, ended it, ended the year with the delivery of uh, PCG Anadolu, which is the first and only LHD of the Turkish Navy and the single largest element of the country's armed forces. So we were very proud to, to be able to celebrate our 50th anniversary with a product um, that hasn't been delivered in Turkey before. So uh, just to give you an idea of uh, what is a shipyard, what does a shipyard do, and uh, what do we mean when we say a product, what different types of products you're working on, uh, I just wanted to have an introduction video uh, to our operations and activities. In case it's too loud, I'll just put this down.
So uh, this is us basically. And uh, our product range spans from uh, small commercial vessels to big naval platforms. And uh, so it's uh, definitely a very uh, new approach uh, in our industry, both in Turkey and abroad. So um, why do I say it's a deep-rooted industry? I don't want to use the traditional term because it's uh, not a traditional industry. It learns with every project. It's very linked to technological advancement and its environmental regulations. It's constantly uh, up to date. And uh, so uh, in mid 19th century, uh, the shipbuilding in the modern sense started with the use of steel and steam engines in ships entering world trade. And uh, about 85 to 90% of the world trade uh, goes on ships. And in 1950s and 60s, transition from wooden ships to steel ships in Turkey's private sector shipyards took on. And in the 1970s, construction and export of Turkish ships for customers abroad started. So SEDEF, uh, since its establishment in 1972, has been a leading figure in the Turkish shipbuilding. And that today it serves customers globally in naval and commercial shipbuilding, conversion projects, and industrial projects. However, today uh, the circumstances changed a bit since we started. There's enhanced competition that came with globalization. There's more complexity to modern shipbuilding, especially with electri uh, electrification. There's generational shifts in employees' work motivations. There's need for leaderships at all levels. There is increasing diversity of customer needs with new technological developments and regulations. And all of this it also leads to the need for smoother integrations of all these developments to stay ahead of the competition, both in delivery time and quality. So these all bring out the need for fast learning and highly adaptable mindset. So how did we start? Um, we read, our uh, CEO read the Toyota Way during COVID lockdown. It was a book that was gifted to him by one of his friends. So upon reading this and with these challenges in mind, they have initiated the Lean Transformation with Lean Institute Turkey in September of 2020. To our knowledge, a uh, set of shipyards still remains the only shipyard in its product range to have embarked on this journey. And there has been over approximately 700 days of collaboration over three years with 17 consultants from uh, Lean Institute Turkey. And when we, when we started this journey, our main objectives were enhancing operational efficiency, minimizing waste and controlling inventory levels, and ensuring on-time delivery both to end customers and between departments and workstations. And when we say controlling inventory levels, uh, um, we have been, we are operating on 270,000 meters squares. So it's a very, very big area and a, with a lot of material flow. And main challenges uh, were adoption of problem solving mindset at all levels, continuous information flow between departments. This still is one of the main challenges and integration of full systems to critical processes. And uh, so today, to date, what have we done? So our activities have been firstly capability development. Uh, we have uh, given lean model factor training to all our employees. On average, we are going about 600 to 650 um, employees on our payroll. But to, of course, deliver these big range products, we work with a lot of subcontractors. So and uh, at the peak, uh, we had about 2,600 subcontractors, which means there's roughly 3,200 people going into the shipyard every day. So we have given model factory training to our, all our employees. We have started team leader and mentorship programs for experienced production personnel on the field so they can pass on the philosophy. And we have um, put together dojo areas for assembly, montage, and grinding. And this has been the first in our sector, at least in, in Turkey. And then um, visual team boards and Asakai meetings have been established both in the office and the field, but this needs greater sustaining efforts and feedback. So I wanted to put our activities and achievements, but I also want to highlight what we have lacked in uh, succeeding to the state. So you'll see my notes, what we need to do more. And uh, we had chief engineer roles, but we have introduced them in greater responsibilities. 
and uh, and obey rooms within production offices are introduced for project management so basically all our uh, projects are now managed within production and within one room bringing all the stakeholders together from each department but here in obey rooms uh, standard forms and procedures not yet in place, which means every chief engineer uh, still, to some degree, um, takes his own approach. And um, another uh, other things we have done in design, planning, production, and material flow, we have started with the use of VCM across departments. This was one of our first uh, activities when we started to clean to understand our processes understand where the value comes from, how it streams and where it's going to, and if it's, if there is any problems blocking the stream. Uh, but PDCA methodology needs adoption at all levels here. Uh, One Piece Flow introduced the two main processes, one of them quite recently, pipe through production and pre-production station. But pre-production station, again, needs sustainment efforts because we haven't been able to make it flexible yet to be adaptable to each project. So each project, be it commercial or naval, uh, has their own um, requirements. So we don't build it the same. So uh, we need sustaining efforts and adaptable station in the pre-production station. Uh, current state analysis done for various design planning and production processes. We have adopted uh, daily plans this year and uh, at all stations mainly. This has been a completely new thing for us because how it works in the shipbuilding, at least for us, is a planning department uh, makes the plans and breaks them down to a certain degree. But then uh, that's left at the degree of activities. After activities, we didn't have a really standard way of looking at our daily plans and what the production teams will be doing, what the logistics teams will be doing, and how they're going to be assisted in, assisted in completing their daily activities. So this is very new for us and, uh, and uh, has definitely delivered some valuable uh, outputs, but continuous use hasn't been possible as of late at all stations. And uh, we have done some in outfitting stations as well, but hull stations, uh, since it, it's where our production begins, it's the start of our production processes. Uh, that's where the main push has been so far. There's of course ongoing uh, cement 5S standard work and autonomous maintenance activities in the field. And a three problem solving technique widely introduced to all management levels and also uh, to levels below as well. But here, uh, we need to be having more practice, being more involved uh, in both problem solving and data collection, going to the Gemba to understanding the problem and defining the problem, breaking it down. This definitely needs more practice and involvement. Currently, it's mainly led by the system and process development team. And uh, here you can see some of the examples of our daily plans here and standard work procedures and, uh, and just um, SNP from our AT methodology. So there's two case studies that I want to highlight here. Uh, one of them was the pipe tool production that I recently men mentioned. Uh, the idea was to create a continuous flow in pipe spool production. So pipe spools it makes up a very big part of uh, ocean going vessels. It's both labor intensive and capital intensive. And uh, so it's very crucial that we achieve productivity and flexibility in this area. Uh, currently, up until recently, how it worked is we would outsource some of it and we would do some of it in our own facilities. Now we're hoping with this um, uh, continuous flow that we're actually able to achieve more productiv productivity and quality and bring it all in. And uh, so the aims here were, um, as I said, achieving productivity and fl flexibility in the process. Uh, since it's uh, the requirements can span across various size uh, and types of pipes and fittings, it's very important to have a layout that allowed for adaptability. Another aim was creating a continuous and easily adaptable flow, starting from materials to market to quality control. Another one that our team has uh, has observed at the beginning was the removing crane usage was going to be crucial to eliminate large sums of idle times. Uh, because in our facilities, 
Ukraine is not just dedicated to one activity or just one station. So uh, if uh, they, this leads to some waiting times between activities as well. So if you could remove this, then we would have actually got rid of a lot of idle time. Uh, another aim was creating mobile stations and motor for materials flow. So the word the drawings, pipes, and fittings can be move easily through the processes and without waiting and together. And so there's no need to look for any more of the material that they need. And establishing a cellular layout in which all necessary equipments are available to the operator and Yamazumi can, can be applied if needed, was another uh, one of our crucial aims. And lastly, uh, establishing a process where problems can be seen easily and on time was very important for us. So here you can see uh, the layout that our team has came up with at the end. Uh, I'll try to explain very quickly and then you'll see a video of how it works. So basically, um, before, the processes were just still close to each other, but kind of in, uh, in a spread out way in a very big area. So they brought it closer and then put them end to end. And instead of people moving, they made sure the materials go by itself uh, with a mobile cart. So ma they made two different uh, designs for different uh, sizes of pipes. And uh, you can see one of the cars that they have designed here. This is fully in-house design that they came up with themselves. And um, and by the way, it's very important to highlight here, this is one of our system and development engineers working here, but the rest of the team was uh, field operators and the engineers on the ground and uh, that have contributed to this project coming alive. And uh, so basically here, uh, the pipes, they cut the pipes as needed, and the one cart starts from here, collecting the drawing and all the materials needed. And then they come here. There's the cutting, and then they go here for uh, pre-production. If there is any need for a uh, welding melt to be opened, any need for grinding to be done, they do it here in the pre-montage station, and they then then they go to montage. And then there is a small sandwich stock that we keep here, but the aim is to not have this uh, waiting times at all. And then they go to their welding stations, depending on which type of welding. And then they go to grinding and finally quality control. And they have also designed these gantries, which we didn't have before. So these three slots that you will see will go here. And the next ones are welding and the next ones are grinding. and up ahead is the quality control area. So uh, why we like this design, it's all the equipment and welding materials and everything they need for montage and etc. Some of them come with the cart itself, depending on the material, but most of them are just here. And it's very flexible to move them around the processes. And depending on what the, what the process needs, the tag time needs, you can actually uh, distribute processes between themselves as well. You can do montage here, or you can do welding here. So it's very easily adaptable uh, to allow for Yamazumi. So now I'll show you uh, how the process flows. If there are any questions, we can take them afterwards. So you will see these carts moving 
when they're done, they just pass it on to the next process. And this is how it works. Our next case study was daily planning and enhanced visibility in steel cutting station. So we have, uh, as I mentioned, started to incorporate uh, daily plans in our hull uh, stations. Now we can see progress per project, block, and CNC machine available for anal analysis every day. And this removes manual inputs and guesstimates as to what our progress is. Uh, one of the most important things in this one and the, the case study that I've shown before, it made it very visible to us what our problems are and where we stop, when we stop, and why we stop. So, um, so this has also given us a lot of data for cutting lead times, enabled, enabling better and more realistic planning going forward. This is also one of the first stations that we have uh, implemented full systems. So then we have eliminated the waiting times and delays from the steel stockyard. And it is also allowed us to work on the Amazumi with the customer stations of the steel cutting. And this is our planning. So results, I'd like to talk about these results a bit less on the data side, but the two, three big results that we have achieved so far. Lean mindset and language introduced across the company and at varying levels. We have now started to accept our problems for what they are and normalize discussing them. This is very new to us. It has been very difficult and still difficult and not applied all the time in the way that we have, we have wished for, but we're still very young at this journey. So uh, at least it's a very big win for us to have started to accept our problems and normalize them. Another thing we are very happy to do is developing people in a focused and specific goal-oriented manner. We have started to develop not just experts at their work, but leaders who understand the philosophy and try to pass it on. This is especially very important on the field that we have very experienced personnel who understand what we're trying to do, what we're trying to achieve, and to pass it on to their uh, successors. And looking at quality in a different light, as I said, since its establishment, SETUF has been a leading figure in quality. We, when you asked us three years ago, we wouldn't say we had any problems in quality. And if you look at our end result now, still we don't. We do excellent shifts. But we have started to look at quality in a different light. We have started to strive for achieving quality right the first time, rather than being satisfied solely with the final quality of our work. So this has been very enlightening for us to see it in a different light. So our challenges, there's still, of course, ongoing resistance to lean culturally and methodologically. There's high turnover, unfortunately, in our industry. And uh, so sometimes we lose momentum in the process. And there's occasional focus shifts in management due to projects, their deadlines, and their priorities. Our strength is our top management is very committed to lean with a very visionary leader profile. And our future vision is to become a pioneer in lean shipbuilding in Turkey and abroad, to deliver the highest quality ships in an efficient manner while providing the safest working environment to all stakeholders in the shipyard, to create systems that enable continuous employee development, and to enhance cross-functional collaboration and smoother material and information flow. So I'd like to thank you uh, for listening. And uh, as you see here, we are not uh, strangers to going into things that are bigger than ourselves. So we are very sure that we are going to achieve very good things in our lean journey. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you, Irem. As a moderator, uh, I am so pleased uh, to hear uh, you, uh, your explanations and your presentation well presented and well prepared presentation for your presentation thank you very much uh, and i know that uh, for the success of lean applications in companies uh, the owner's attitude is very important and the owner family is uh, they love their people. They love their employees. It their attitude against their people uh, suits with lean principle, respect for people. This is really important. The other thing important, I think, uh, they like to share their knowledge, what they learned even with their competitive shipyards they are ready the owner family's idea idea is that 
uh, we are the pioneer so we learn and we can share with our competitors like toyota uh, this is the owner's uh, mentality uh, and this is really important and future vision for sedef shipyard as you see at the last slide is again uh, very specific uh, uh, i congratulate them and uh, good success good luck uh, in their competitiveness journey with lean tools with lean mindset thank you very much i see a, a question from dennis bennett is there a similar industry that has been helpful to learn from yes i can take that one so uh <laughs> we definitely um, i wouldn't say an industry but a company definitely we st starting uh, in 2020 we have always looked at toyota and but of course our processes are very different our product range is very different our deadlines are very different now everything and the, our customers even are very different uh, so what what we have tried to take from them is the philosophy and modify it uh, for our needs and for our customers and employees so definitely an automotive industry i can say is the industry industry that has been very helpful to learn from but specifically toyota we have been looking at it and reading a lot so uh, last three years has been just about reading <laughs> a lot of books as well as working on the field and um, so specifically i can say we're looking at toyota and their philosophy and how they look at their people thank you uh, thank you thank you irem thank you dear attendees uh Warm regards from Turkey and Istanbul. Thank you very much. Thank you.